What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. If you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at a couple features in Studio One 5 that kind of fly under the radar, but I think are really, really useful. All right, feature number one. We have this new icon over here, and it's actually available as a key command as well. So you could toggle that on with a keyboard shortcut, and that is select part automation with notes. So let's double click this MIDI part. So with it deselected, we have basically the same behavior we've always had. Let's say that we have some different information that's associated with this note data. If I move that, this information stays in the same place. But if you have this feature on or enabled, then as we move the note data, that information is going to follow with the note data. Really, really useful feature. Now, while we're talking about the MIDI editor, I know I always prefer having the ability to have all these features available as key commands in Studio One, but if you scroll down over here, we can show hide the automation lanes for the event editor. Now, this can be really, really useful if you need to maximize screen real estate or if you just want to clean up your view and be working in different views. This is now available as a key command. So I have this mapped out and it's pretty easy for me to be able to toggle that. And in order to find that, you just want to head to Studio One, Keyboard Shortcuts. And if we type in Automation, we have this new key command over here, Show Automation Lanes. And I've just mapped that out to something that was available on my system. Next feature. So a lot of the times it can be useful to set your bar one as being a different bar. Now this is something that was introduced in the version four life cycle, and we could get to that essentially by opening up our song setup and adjusting our bar offset here. But let's say perhaps if you're working in the arrangement window, and I know that I want bar three to be bar one. Now if we right click, we have the option to set bar offset to cursor. And what this will do is essentially make your cursor position be the new bar one. So that one can be a really, really useful feature just so you don't have to go into the song setup menu. Now, while we're talking about some right click options that we have available on our timeline, another big one for anybody who's using Studio One to work with picture is let's say that you needed a specific bar to be your hour one time code start position. So I've got my secondary counter set to frames over here and my main counter is set to bars. Let's say, let's actually use both of these. Let's say that I want this to be my bar one, but in addition to wanting to have this position reflect bar one, I also want this position to reflect my zero one time code counter position. So. In order to do this previously, we'd have to open up the song setup and you'd have to do some calculations for the frame offset. Now this would obviously involve a little bit of um, thinking ahead of time to make sure that you set the proper frame offset. But in Studio One version five, it's very easy to do. We can just right click the timeline and then we have the ability to set frame offset to cursor. And again, when this is locked on a bar, in this case, our new bar one, which we've defined, this will automatically make it so that our frames are exactly at hour one counter for this bar position. And this can work anywhere. So for example, all I have to do is relocate my cursor. I could relocate my cursor over here, right click, set frame offset to cursor. Now currently the way that both of these work is that for the bar, it's going to map bar one. And for the frames, it will always map uh, the frames as being a zero one time code position start. What I'd like to see in the future is giving us some type of dialog box. So for example, I could right click and not necessarily choose bar one, but maybe I want this to be bar five or something like that over here. And maybe I want this time code position to be actually something completely different than bar one. But nevertheless, it's nice to see these two features have been added in version five and I hadn't seen them covered. So I just wanted to do a really quick video that outlined these. These are a couple things that I'll be implementing into my workflow right away. Anyways, that's all the time I've got available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.